be getting some questions about how to write bass lines. So today, I think what I'm gonna do is write a bass line to some music, and you can hang out with me while I do that. I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I'm listening for, or some of the ideas and things that I'm thinking about, and hopefully by the end of this video, you will have some more helpful resources on how to write bass lines of your own, and it uh, should be a fun video. So here we go. Here's the drums. Here's our chords. And here's a little melody that I wrote. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen for the kick drum pattern. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four pulse going on. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna listen for is gonna be the chord progression. You've got the C minor, you've got a G minor, which has got a G, a B flat, and a, and a D. You've got an A flat major, which is A flat, C, and E flat. And you've got a B flat major, which is B flat, D, and F. I think a good rule uh, for a safe bass line is gonna be to not stay on any note too long that isn't a chord tone. Now we know our drums. And our drum pattern, we know our chords and what notes are in our chords, and we know the melody, and also not just the notes of the melody, but the timing of the melody, because I think it's important uh, in where you put your movement in your bass line. If, if the melody's moving, you want your bass line to move at a different time than your melody moves, or uh, in a way that is complementing the melody. You don't want to distract from the melody, right? So. I, I, if I'm gonna do something interesting, I usually do it in a hole in the melody so that I'm not taking away. I kind of think sometimes there's there's notes that you can choose that make the sound of the chord, it highlights an aspect of the chord, or you can play more neutral notes like roots and fifths. I think sometimes on major chords, I like to use uh, the fifth more than the third. Uh, so on minor chords, I think it's kind of spicy to outline the flat three. Uh, and then, that's cool. So it's one, five octave of the A flat, and then bounce down the five down to the root of the new chord. Kind of like that, so we got. Now, one thing that I'm noticing is the chord layer has this kind of rhythm. One, two, three, four. There's too much going on. Uh, let me just like stop. Let me just stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna listen. We're just gonna listen. I think what's making me feel weird, and sometimes this happens, where this actually is, is a good thing to talk about, where if you're playing in a band setting, as a bass player, sometimes you feel stuck between what two different band members are doing. Because what I'm trying to do right now is try and find some sort of part that's gonna like weave through these layers and tie them together. I think the problem that I'm having is the guitar line is like really percussive and bouncy, and it's accenting different beats than the kick drum. The kick drum is one and two and three and, and then the guitar is dun, 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 dun. so that's three and four. So I need to come up with something that works with the probably three and four, because there's three from the guitar, three and from the kick drum, and four from the guitar. Uh, so I think I need to find something simpler harmonically that locks in the rhythm a little bit. Three and four, it could be one, five, one. Beats three and 
four could be notes one, five, one. Sometimes the fifth, man, people think of playing like one, five, one as like a super country thing, but it sounds pretty cool on a lot of things. Like a lot of the old Beatles stuff has a lot of, Paul McCartney's doing a lot of Route 5-1 over rock music, right? Um, or I'm thinking too, like this reminds me a little bit of like Vultures, John Mayer, where Pino Palladino is doing a lot of like Route 5-1. Um, and then I think too, the drums are like real like, they're not super open, they're very like punchy. So this brings up another thing is like note duration. Like so sometimes the best thing you can do is just cut a note short and that can help the groove sort of pump with the drums. So what I think I wanna do is let that C ring out all the way through the measure. And then on the next measure, when we get to the G, mute that. One and two and three and four mute. The note disappears on the and of four. Imagine like a heart pumping. It's sort of, yeah, there's sort of a rhythm in the in the duration. I'm curious to see what the jazz bass is gonna sound like on this uh, with the round line strings, which is a little brighter. So I'm just gonna switch real quick to the jazz bass. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think it might be it. I think this one was less about incorporating melodic things and more about trying to marry two parts that aren't working well. Uh, sometimes like as a bass player in a band, you either need to come up with a part that can weave between parts that don't seem to be working well or you might have to talk with the drummer or the guitar player in this instance and be like, hey, let's decide on a rhythm we all want to accent together. Let's all make collective decisions as a band with our arrangement to try and make the music mix itself. Um, but it, you have to be diplomatic about it, right? You know, it's everyone is making these decisions together, so you need to be cool about how you, how you make suggestions for other people's parts. Try not to micromanage your band members too much. There's usually like an arc of like, you have your idea, you make it more complicated, you realize it's too complicated, you go back down, and then you try and find like, what were the things in the complex version that were worth keeping, um, and how do you incorporate those back in? There's so many ideas, you know, that you could do and they'd all work, but maybe only one or two of them are really good. So it's like, how do we find the good ones? Um, that's what's hard. This is, uh, I love this kind of stuff. I love thinking about and talking about these sort of ideas. I am really glad to have you hanging out with me talking about music, because I love talking about music. If you could consider subscribing, it would really help me out because I'm hoping to grow this channel and I'm hoping to be able to do more videos. Thank you for being here. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.